Hey guys, it's Chris, and welcome back to another Amiga video. This time we busted out the old Amiga 500. We took off the GVPs because I acquired a Datafire 500. This is a full-size hard drive controller for the Amiga 500, and if you strip it apart, you can put it in your 2000. Also, I have both of my cameras going right now so we could see it on the computer or right here on the computer or right here on the uh, regular camera. Now I am recording with uh, two microphones and the camera microphone is always superior to this uh, blue snowball piece of crap which I hate. Don't buy, don't buy this mic. Get a better one. Alright, so what do we got going on? I bought this on eBay. It was, they wanted $90, but I offered $40 and it was $10 shipping, so $50. Bucks. Uh, this unit was marked as untested, so we all know in the Amiga community, untested means that shit broke. And uh, we can tell right now that the cover here is just total, uh, you know, it's not in bad shape. It's a little dirty. Okay, it's, it's, it's fine. Inside of the unit, we get a, uh, ooh, yeah, look at that. Now, I'm not too fond of the lighting here tonight, uh, so I apologize for any lighting weirdness, so maybe the, the camera here will be better. So what we'll do is this, we'll go to better full screen on that one, and we'll try doing uh, this. So inside of here, it has a 25-pin uh, connector that goes to the back which is a DB25 on the rear. Inside it came with a hard drive that is not mounted. Uh, this is a old Seagate and I do not know the size but we're gonna find out here in a second. We're gonna use this drive to fire it up to see if it works. Um, do not apply pressure to top cover. MLC0, it is a Seagate ST15 seven or no yeah one five seven n which is probably like a 20 megger I don't know what the exact size of this but Seagate one five wow seven n look at these chips look how thick they are it's like a daggone motherboard itself wow that's crazy it has a head sensor right here all right and a 15 megahertz crystal well, if I need any spare parts, look at the big terminators on this. Incredible, big terminators. Okay, uh, moving on, it has no screws, so we're going to pop out the, the card here out of the riser slot. And it is a, we're going to take this out actually, just move this to the side. So this is a uh, expansion systems data flyer. 200 revision 1.2 copyright 1990 it has built-in terminators on the board so there will be no need for the drive to have them it has a missing chip this says df1 scuzzy interface capricorn systems copyright 1990 serial number 1047 i don't know what is supposed to be in this second slot it has data flyer auto boot version 1.1 Oh, wow, with the AMD from 86 SCSI controller chip, that is also in my Amiga 3000. Uh, one barrel capacitor that looks not leaky. It's intact. Oh, one more electrolytic near the top here. It has a spot to be folded over, actually. That's funny. All right, it has a 5, a ground, and a 12-volt rail for a power... It's not. It's powered by the Amiga bus, which is great. As like all of the Data Flyer products, if you take this jumper off, you can put a 8 meg memory board on here, which you've seen in my previous videos. I put it in the 2000, so you can give an 8 meg Amiga and a you know 8 megs. You can use this in a 2000 as a SCSI controller too by just removing this uh, bus. If but I uh, I want to make this live in the 500 again. So, as you can see here, we have the 500 turned on. There is the, uh, the glorious Workbench 2.0 screen. 
that we're so accustomed to seeing with the little flying disc and I love the colorations on the let me get check mark so oops let's get to the big camera alright so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the Amiga run for a moment and I'm gonna actually just plug this in like so now you're wondering well what is the right way is it this way no well the Amiga bus only has the Zorro slot wide it always has this extra room so you just look and match your pins up so your gold doesn't exceed and then snap it on uh, these are always aluminum weird looking pads I don't know they're not really great quality and it looks like this hasn't ever been touched that I can tell. Cardcon 9108. Right. Some of the solder masking is starting to separate. You can see a little bit of uh, crustiness in here. I don't know if this camera is going to pick it up. So, we're going to continue on here with uh, I'm going to move this I want, you know what, I'm going to leave this part on because I want to see if the, the LED works for drive. So, in a minute. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to plug this old turd in here. Pin 1 to power. I don't know the jumpers. It's got four jumper settings and it's already jumpered. So we're just going to plug this in. Now I do have a new Amiga power supply that I purchased uh, PSU A500 US from ROHS uh, yeah this was the eBay uh, from Poland ooh that's uh, yeah nice alright so we're going to turn the 500 off here and uh, we're just going to plug the board in there we go ghetto fabulous Okay, so we'll pick that up probably on the this camera here. I'm actually going to attempt to plug in this little LED and let it sit to the side. I do not know which direction, so I could be wrong, but we're looking for the power light here. So let me uh, pan down just a tick. We'll go to both screens here. All right, here we go. Ooh, listen to that. Listen to that. Oh. Uh, that don't sound good. I have no light. I'm going to try this way. No light. All right, what do we got? We got ROMs. Let's try a re warm reboot. hear it and reboot all right let's uh let's get a workbench disc so it uses what's called DF prep and uh, looks like there's my workbench do, 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 do. looks like this data flyer has its own uh, disc so we're gonna go ahead and put that in the 500 here it's booter that's 3.8 I have 30 and 3.8 some AMAX stuff for the 3000, which is actually on right now. So here we go. Let's go to the camera itself. Let's go uh, here. So this is the data flyer disc. We're just going to boot off this DF prep, expert prep, and fast prepper GVP. My apologies. So, oh, look at that. It found the hard drive, unit zero. We're going to try and, uh, we're going to try and use this on one mega RAM. <laughs> All right, we're going to click install. Do you want the program to automatically install your hard drive? We can say no. No. I want to see how big it is. Oh, look at that. It's a 46. Yeah, yeah, get. It's 46 megs. Yay, that's just so large. Alright, so we're gonna call it fly zero. No, we're gonna need DH0. Uh 25 megs. No, we don't do we really want two partitions on a 50 meg drive? Alright, we're doing fast file system boot priority zero. 32 buffers. 
Yeah. So we're going to give it 30. And we're going to say install. That's all we got. Sure. Do you want to install everything? We're going to do full install. We're going to low level format the drive. I don't know. Do we? Sure. All right. So, without banging everything around, I grabbed another LED here. I just want to see if this one works. I don't know which one is positive, which one's negative. All right, so we have a hard drive LED here. And you can see, I don't know if you can see. Uh, whoops, let's do both cameras again here on the uh, thing. So, see the reflection in my hand here. We do have a hard drive light. This is burned out. It's right on the top and uh, not on the bottom. So, this is a little tester I plugged in. So, we are going to... checking that one yeah. it's amazing I didn't think it would be going bad oh wait a minute I, I got it looks like we have a wire pinch I should be able to get this working again. awesome I had it blinking looks like there's a cut right here Oh my god, how long does it take to format 25 or 50 megs? Almost done? Why is it testing the disk speed again? Alright, we're aborting this crap. Oh, I can't even put it abort. Alright, I'm going to stop this camera until it's done so I don't run out of power. We're going to say no to uh, format this sucker this time. And this program does SCSI or IDE drives. I've used this on the IDE side of the data flyer. We'll say install. We'll say no. We have DH0. Wonderful. Quit. That's perfect. We're going to say install. Continue. And then we're going to go full install. And we're going to say no. There we go. Writing RDB. And now when we look at both cameras you can see the hard drive doing its thing as it does all the mount partitions and the auto boot which is controlled by the chip not the software would you like to format uh... sure formatting a normal workbench format i can see a light little flicker down below there i don't know how long this will take Oh, uh, do you want to install a workbench on DH0? Sure, why not? Insert your workbench disk. We're going to do workbench 1.3.2. Creating auto boot files. It's doing something. Okay. We have a little ECS man with a shaky wrench and a big smashed thumb and says installation complete. So then we click abort and there's Fly Zero. Even though I told it, do not name yourself Fly Zero. We're removing it and we are going to do the triple finger. And we're rebooting and we're just going to see if this boots by itself now. And of course... <laughs> No. All right. So we're going to boot off of Workbench 1.3.2. So we have no fast RAM. We have no hard drive. Where's my hard drive? There is my, hard drive. my apologies for a long video. But that's always troubleshooting. I overfilm. Do I get anything that pops up? No, I do not. Okay, so after we partitioned our drive, we're going to toss in install 2.1 here off my pile of copies. My originals, as you can see, are right here. Uh, this HD Tools, H, come on, little slash, HD Toolbox EX 
Ooh, EXPSYS dot device. That's the device driver of expansion systems. This is just ass crack. <laughs> I think this auto boot chip is not working. It's not working. How can I test this? Well, I just so happen to have a brand new data flyer SCSI board. Seen this in my videos many times. What I got is this. We'll go a lot of crap. Okay, so we're going to turn this off for just a tick. Listen to that thing spin down. So this is a later revision SCSI interface from Data Flyer. And I'm going to go ahead and unplug my rear cable. So this is what it's, the later revisions are looking like. Now this one is for the 2000. It doesn't have, it has the jumper and all that stuff. Um, hard drive mounting holes. Everything is very similar. So removing this one here. We'll compare. So, as you can see, the board is a little shorter. Can you see that? The board is just a little bit shorter. This one is a much darker green and cleaner because it's new. Uh, this is SCSI. You can have SCSI or IDE. Uh, it has a little bit of different revisions. We have the same three pin power. We have capacitor on the opposite side, three terminators, the same AMD, uh, different revision, this one's 89, this one's 86, this is an older chip, son of a bitch, yeah. AMD 1986, AMD 5380PC, this is an AMD 5380PC, 86, oh, I was reading it upside down, huh, <laughs> 86, so yeah, the same exact chip, uh, Dataflyer Auto Boot 2.1, this is 1.1, same big ass Malaysia pinout chip. Uh, we have a DFS PAL, which says for bus. Uh, this is apparently for DTAC, which we're not using. 5 volts enabled on and off. It has an LED, this has a power and a SCSI LED. The same, uh, capacitor which is what is this a 220 yeah 16 volt 220 16 so volt. i'm going to put this card in the in the bus on the 500 and just plug this hard drive into it to see what's up we're going to fire it up okay let's get both screens this hard drive is really slow to fire up Now, the only thing I can see is weird is, look over here, the Seagate, it has this little goofy thing. Startup sequence.hd, yeah. Let's, uh, rename. old and then we're going to rename dash dot hd to alright now we're going to reboot take this out there we go alright all right, so rename it. It's 1989. Awesome. Load. Oops. Workbench. And then we can do NCLI. I'll have to edit this uh, thing. Why are we still called Fly Zero? XDH Zero. All right, so there we go. We're booting 1.3 in the hard drive. Okay, so we had to rename the old startup up sequence to get it to show. 
and mount. Now that is on the newer card. Let's turn her off. We should boot. All right. So the auto boot doesn't work. All right. So one final update. After many hours you've seen, well, I've edited this down, but I have a couple repairs to do. Like, I broke one of the ground wires off here, and I apologize on this camera. Um, but what I need to do is solder this back on, and this, this chip here, this uh, Motorola 74... 521N, this chip I looked up is what's called a comparator, and it takes the averages of two voltages and outputs one digital voltage to this chip, which I forget what the hell it is, and this little tiny one over here, this is a, a 74F32N, this is for 8-bit, and that's for when you use this in an Amiga 1000. These cards were, uh, you know, common throughout the expansion systems line from data flyer or data flyer line from expansion systems and they had a memory board which I have in the 3000 and you saw my other SCSI module but the problem I'm having is the auto boot chip here and so, <laughs> I peeled the sticker off to get the number and it just says auto boot data flyer auto boot rev 1.1 that's hard to see on that but I went to get the EEPROM number, and this is a uh, 27C6415. It's like an 8-bit uh, EEPROM. I wanted to find a blank. This was just an eBay run. Uh, I want to find a blank EEPROM, and I have a 2.1 in the other machine. So I want to get an EEPROM reader and read the... 2.1 chip I have and write it to a blank so my auto boot works. I did swap out my comparator, my auto boot, and this it just worked fine uh, every time. Now there is a little bit of a delay with the spin up and that's just because of the ancient hard drive here. This thing is only like you saw 40 megs or so. So that's where we're at. This can be used currently in an Amiga 2000 if you just needed some SCSI or even the DB25 uh, pass-through. And both cards came with that. This one has a DB25 on the uh, on, a, on a card, or a backstop. So you could put this one, oops, pin one. You could put this on this card and run it out the back and have external SCSI if you didn't require auto boot if you were running like your vampire or a compact flash IDE but if you were going to try and run a SCSI to SD and you know boot off of this card which a lot of you would it's what you want to do we're going to need to fix this auto boot and especially in a 500 situation where you're in a case and I'm going to repair the light uh, when you're in an external case and you want it to kind of line up and, and you know, well, well, this side of course, and be one unit, you want it to boot. So that's what I want to do. That's going to be an extended project. It's going to take some time to acquire these other components that I need. And then we'll worry about the two capacitors and a couple of the ceramics and the resistors and the terminator packs. We'll get into it a little bit later on uh, when I get more down the road. There's a ton of projects that I have to do, um, but they're on hold for various reasons. So thanks for watching, and I hope this helps someone, and I hope you learned something.